welcome back from the break. Now it's time for us to have a little chat. You are going to be watching the conversation segment. Give me a H. How do you do a H? H. Give me a H. H. You got your H. You got your H. Give me an I. I. You got your I. You got your I. Give me a V. V. You got your V. You got your V. What does that spell? H I V. That's right. Don't be scared. Don't run away. Don't switch it off. The guests today, we are going to be discussing HIV and love and how they manage to live perfectly wonderful, normal lives. I'm going to be talking to a couple. You guys have seen a few couples editions. This one, though, is a couple that they're not in the same location, yeah, during coronavirus. So they're going to tell us about their experience with that. And um, the lovely couple that I'm talking about is Penny Awiki Spielfield and Carlton Spielfield. And they are also going to be telling us about dun, 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 HIV. I know you hear that word all the time. You get so shook. Penny and Carlton are going to be breaking down for us how being HIV positive and raising a family that big of a deal it can be done guys it can be done okay <laughs> hi fanny hi Carlston. Hi. hi so Carlston, you're in germany yeah correct mm -hmm. fanny you're here in nairobi mm -hmm. how are you guys doing how long have you been separate separated for oh um, um. it was march 14th Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was when my son was born. I've been to Kenya and uh, yeah. And then, then I had to return it. back to Germany. And since then, yeah. The lockdown happened. I want to hear all about how you guys have been coping as a couple. I'm so excited. But first, let me first ask how are the children? You now have three children. How is yeah. it? How is it with three kids during Big coronavirus, family. and you have to stay in the house, Fanny? How are you dealing? Oh my God, it's so hectic, Susan. It's so 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 hectic. I just feel like hiding myself under, under the bed, <laughs> and just saying, "No, I'm not there today. I'm not there." <laughs> Um, it's hectic and at the same time, of course, fulfilling because, um, of course, now I'm raising another, another child, you know, uh, born and they're all so excited. They're all caught up in that moment, you know, can I try carry, carry him? Can I try carry him? The first one actually knows how to change his diapers. Oh, nice. Very well. Yeah. So they're all learning so much from the brother and it's so fulfilling. And it brings out um, the other unique traits that I actually didn't know. You know, at the beginning, we thought that when mm -hmm. I was pregnant, after giving birth, then my second child, who was by then the last born, would be jealous and all that, you know? But now it turned out that she was the responsible one, you know? She sleeps wow. with the brother every Yeah, so it's bringing out some unique traits, like, is that a huggy? You know, we are all wondering, wow, can I have you do that? Yeah. That is amazing. I can only imagine how hectic it is. I, 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 I yeah. wouldn't even imagine what your days look like with three little munchkins running around the house. Um, Carlston, how has it been for you? Because you're having a very unique experience. You have a newborn baby, but you're all the way in Germany. Yeah, for me, it's a little bit difficult because... I'm missing them all the way and we only can have a conversation by WhatsApp and yeah it's it's a little bit hard for me as well to yeah to be around with my family and um yeah I I, I really miss them a lot yeah. Aww, yeah I can imagine let's go back let's not not think about the sad message it's fine we're gonna be fine You'll be back in Kenya soon, I hope. Um, and now there's awesome technology like this that we're using that can help you guys yeah. and see each other and you can see the baby. So that's awesome. Um, so, Fanny, you publicly came out on social media in 2017. Mm -hmm, that's correct. Yes. And you have talked about obviously facing, you know, so much stigma and so much judgment um, throughout yeah. your experience from when you found out you were positive in high school till 
you know, you came out. Um, but then you said that you met Carlston around the time that you came out on social media. But you guys weren't dating mm-hmm. at the beginning. So I want to know, what did Carlston tell you? How did you guys meet? Did you meet on social media? How did that, how did Carlston convince you <laughs> to be his wife? <laughs> okay, you know, I was... Um... Of course, I separated with the father of my kids in 2016, early 2016. Mm-hmm. And that was around the time that I just gave birth to the second, to the second child, Ahadi. Uh, we separated actually when Ahadi was only two weeks old, you know. And then, um, yeah, yeah. So that was so difficult, of course. Um, and then I was very much happy broken so much has broken it was not your usual breakup i know everyone has a unique breakup and all that you know yeah. but mine was so mine was so emotional because i remember him saying that i should tell the kids that he was knocked by a lorry he doesn't i read people. that and but, i was like Whoa. yeah yeah like so much happened so i had to um I was, I, I, I locked myself, you know, I closed myself to men. doesn't matter if you're white or Egyptian or whatever, men, it's just, you know, I was in that caliber of men are dogs, men are... Yeah, no, we're done, finished. <laughs> yes. So, and then late 2016, Kasten was in Kenya. He came for a vacation and then, of course, we bumped into each other in Nairobi and he was shortly going to Mombasa. And that's how we met on the very first time. But it was just, hi, hi, how are you? You look so good. And then that was it. Uh, and then, of course, we exchanged contacts. But I heard that he was German. And because Germans are racist, we all know that. <laughs> and all that. I just said this one, no, I'm not ready to, you know, all those experiences people always talk about, yeah. you know, in Germany and all that. Yeah, so... Of course, we, I, we blocked each other. We were not in communication for so long. And then he came back in um, 2017, late 2017 towards 2018. He actually opened an Instagram account because of me. And then he was oh, inboxing me on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, so, so he inboxed me on Instagram. And of course, I kept on dodging. I'm like, ah, this guy, okay, maybe it's not even the little Carsten, you know? Oh yeah, it's yeah. So, else. Yeah, and then he started saying that he's seen my videos on coming out and all that. He's also HIV positive, blah blah blah. Because I came out in 2017 May, and that's it. Yeah. So that's how. Yeah. The rest they say it's history. The first time that I came, that I went to Germany was last year, 2019 in June, and it changed everything. You know, because. It was not what I thought it was. I mean, the racism that we always we were always taught in school and everything. People are so open-minded, you know. Yeah. People so they respect each other. But wana kasirika sana. Wana kwanga on the edge. <laughs> I'm telling her that you guys are always like this all the time. Upset. <laughs> upset. <laughs> That is so cool. So basically, you're telling me that Carlston's first move was he slid in the DMs on Instagram. Yes, and yes. it worked. Yes. <laughs> that one didn't work out. The other one didn't work out. And then, yeah, of course, him sliding the DM also took some time, you know. Because I was living my life, you know, I had made decisions, serious decisions. Not even, not anyone would not have changed it, you know. I'm a single mom of two by then. I want the best for my kids. I don't want to introduce them to any other man, you know, all that. I also did a a single mom, you know, so I didn't care. Anyone who was going to get into our space was an intruder. Right. Yeah. It was also all the trauma, you know, when you come from a tough relationship and you've had a bad breakup, you yeah not even about how nice the person that's coming is it's about what you are going through as a person yeah. as a mom mm-hmm. um carlston i want you to tell me about dating a single mom in fact first convincing a single mom to date you because it's not easy and you have to show a single mom you're serious <laughs> okay but the beginning it was a little bit strange but um I'm very open-minded about any other or, yeah, something new, to be honest. 
And I'm, I really love kids. So for me, it doesn't matter if my partner is still or is having kids or not. For me, it doesn't matter. It, it matters that we understand each other, that we uh, cooperate as a couple, that we love each other. And that's the most important for me. So there is nothing like, oh, my God, this woman is already having kids. I don't want that. That was, I never was doubting that. So for me, it doesn't matter if my partner still have it or is already having kids or not. Most important is that uh, we understand each other. We have a good relationship and that's the most important. I completely agree. Um, and that's amazing. And I love that you guys found each other. But the thing that probably hits home with everybody is you found each other, you're in love, yes, but you both happen to be HIV positive. And both of you had actually been positive for quite a while um, before alone in your own separate lives. Yeah. Um, and then you found each other. Um, now, you are an undetectable couple. Can you explain to all our viewers who might not know exactly what that means? That means, um, okay, I just can say it from the German side, but I think it might be the same from the Kenyan medical side as well. Um, every three months I need to go to see my doctor test um, to see how is my uh, CD4 counts and my uh, virus load. And um, so right now, uh, undetectable means that um, there is less than 20 copies uh, by one milliliter blood. Is it correct, love? Yeah, that's right, of the virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that will be tested every three months. Okay. Um, and as long as this uh, virus load is undetectable, then you can't infect somebody else with HIV. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, cool. that's essentially what we're doing. So viral load is the amount of the virus that's in your blood, more or less. Exactly. So that's why you said yeah. per milliliter of blood. Um, <laughs> so less than 20. So you're undetectable to the point where the viral load of the HIV is mm -hmm. so low that it, it's not detectable or you can't necessarily infect another person or increase a positive exactly. you can't, viral load. Yeah, right? exactly. You can't spread it to somebody else because the virus load is undetectable. So that means uh, that I can't infect somebody else with my infection. Yeah, right. Cool. Okay. And you guys have been undetectable for quite a while. And, and I know being undetectable has a lot to do with educating yourself on the virus, understanding it, and then also making sure you're taking the medications. You're taking your ARVs and you're keeping healthy. And that essentially keeps somebody undetectable. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. Now, you guys are raising negative children. Um, and that wasn't possible very many years ago, but today it is. Um, Fanny, when it comes to stigma and all of that, do you have any worries when it comes to you as parents being positive and your children being negative? Is there a difficulty navigating the world that way or is it actually better and easier? Um, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, for me, it's like um, I'm some superpower, you know, I'm breaking the barrier literally in front of my eyes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> practical, you know, I'm like, who I'm giving back to these kids. They don't have the virus like I do, you know, Yeah. like that is magical, you know, it's so magical. It's like those superheroes in, in the movie come out so strong, like, woo. <laughs> anyway, it's so magical. I'm so serious. Like, wow. You know? <laughs> People just don't get it. I think I get it more yeah. because uh, my mom passed it to me. Right. For me to pass it to my kids, oh my God, that is like, oh, you did it. You know, that is such a good achievement. You it's know? true. That's amazing. Like, wow. 
yeah, it's like um, some scientists who's actually discovered the cure for HIV. That's how I feel all through, you know, like I can walk how I feel like and it's so nice. It's such an amazing feeling. Um, I'm living through the miracle every single day, just waking up to, wow, I can breastfeed Quay and he's HIV negative and I'm positive. Oh my God, it's so nice, you know? <laughs> yeah, and the other kids are also negative. I mean, they are, they are free, you know? They can do whatever they want. They have their freedom of health and all that. They're not tied with this tiny virus that is so good. That is so amazing to hear. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's true. And I, I can't even imagine the sensation, but I love that you said that it feels like you're literally breaking this barrier and you feel like the scientists themselves, you're like, yeah, I've cured the virus technically. Because if me, I don't have it. If me, I have it. I truly don't have it. Is that not a cure? If I went through... <laughs> My body, and that's awesome. That's amazing. Um, Carlston, you, when you married Fanny, and with her mm-hmm. children as well, and now you guys have your own child together, you now have what we call a blended family. And you guys have differences in race, and now there's also the first two children, and this second child. You guys are like the, the, mo- the most blended of blended of 2020. <laughs> Um, as a German, as you call Stan, how do you navigate? Um, like, do you find that you need to educate yourself on certain things? Because obviously now you have children that are black, but you have a son that's black and white. So he has both your blood and Penny's blood. How do you navigate that whole thing in your head? And how do you think you're going to cope with them growing up? Because you're all different. Um, to be honest, as real couple... Uh, I have no no issues about it because um, here in Germany as well there are so many mixed couples uh, with with uh, also the same in the same situation they have mixed kids and I, I I'm so happy about it to be honest and I have no problems about it so for me it's just a natural thing to be honest yeah. And I'm that I met Fanny, and yeah, we have a mixed family. To be honest, it is a beautiful. So I'm really happy about it. Mm-hmm. I love it. That is so cool, Fanny. Um, when you left your first marriage before you got into the second one, mm-hmm. you moved in even to Mombasa, right? You moved from Nairobi to Mombasa. You said that you made some very serious I- decisions about your life yeah. you're gonna go you are those mamas you are standing you're like it's me and my children <laughs> thank you yeah, yeah. You, you and it was practically me and my kids when you see me carrying them around remember remember <laughs> they are like twins you know i conceived the first one and the second one was just five months old you know wow so when the first one i carry when the second one was born i would carry the first one here Faraja here, a hadi on the on the baby carrier. It was practically me and my kids. Literally, even when and you're walking, you're one, one team. <laughs> yes. Here and here. I don't want any issues with any man in this world. Yeah. Yeah. But you left your first marriage. Um, you settled into life. You now even met somebody else. Um, but you mm-hmm. still are very, very um, active on social media and in the media to talk about HIV and to build more awareness about it and to explain to people how they can actually live a healthy, amazing, positive life. Where did that come from? Like that day that you came out so sh- on social media in 2017, what drove you to that point? Yeah. You know what? Something that is so shocking is that it was just a typical day. It was not scripted. It was not planned. It was not filtered you know i just woke up one day and i was tired of um no what i started doing uh-huh. in between i told you that we 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 kind of lost contact with the with Kasten. so i was trying to get into the world of flirting also you know i was just trying to drive myself away from that there's someone waiting for me and all that yeah yeah so um, so i was flirting i used to I started flirting in early 2017 and it was not working for me. Any person that I would be meeting, they would say that, um, I, and I would tell them that I'm HIV positive, of course, after some time, you know, 
uh, they would reject me. So that felt, I felt so offended. Like, okay, this is so illiterate. It's literally Ushamba for you to reject me with my status, you know? Right. So, yeah, so that's when one day in May, May 5th, at around 4 or 5 p.m. exactly, 2017, I said, you know what? I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of explaining to every Tom, Dick, and Harry about my status. Why can't I just come out? And I'll be free from it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then there were some little small gossips and side shows of, yeah, she's positive, she's positive. You know, I wanted to clear all that air, yeah. you know? Yeah, so that's how I, I actually just went out there. I was going literally for approval addiction. I wanted to, to say, you know what, yes, I'm HIV positive, so what? And then I thought it was just a post that I would be making, and th- like any other post, like, hi, guys, and, you move on. and we move on. But then this post really attracted so many shares. I got like 1,500 shares. Wow. Three, five K uh, likes, and over 1,000 comments. I'm like, are these people... Where have they come from also? Like, where have you guys no, been? No, like, <laughs> a big deal is HIV such a big deal I think I had what I had a hundred followers by then so that is a lot of engagement wow yeah so I'm, I'm the type of people that used to post and maybe you get one like after one week you know <laughs> I, I didn't even think, I didn't even think that I would attract so many people but anyway the more the more people that uh, the more reactions I got from this post the, uh, of course, the negative also, and the positive and the ignorant ones, I felt like, wow, people really have a long way to go, you know? I should actually proclaim, self-proclaim myself as a HIV activist. Let me do this. And then I started HIV testing. And I did HIV testing and counseling as a course. So that is so helpful for me because I have every single fact of HIV at the tip of my hand, right. of my fingers. I, yeah. Um, that is amazing. I thought there would be like a whole life coach or counseling or behind it, but I like that you were just like fed up. You were just like, I'm tired of other people talking about this, saying what they think about me and they can't even say it to my face. So now I'm just going to make it public. And I think that's really cool. Um, again, on your Instagram, you posted when you were pregnant in such a beautiful picture and you're with Carlston and you talked about how when you first uh, were positive way back in high school HIV was like like so prevalent it was a, it was actually a national crisis and I remember um that time and I'm like wow because you said just like coronavirus right now it's like a global um, issue it's a whole global pandemic and we're all living yeah it and trying to figure it out and mm-hmm. you know it made me think that means that this too shall pass like we will eventually yep. Yeah. We'll figure it out whether it's medication or we'll permanently live like this or whatever it is but life will go on whatever yeah. happens you know and uh, what i want to know is you've always talked about your experience when you first discovered you were positive i want carlson to tell us what was it like um when you first discovered you were positive you um went for testing how was that journey for you and what was it like because i'm assuming you were in germany yeah, it was. I was detected positive in 2009. Um, I had a long way to go until they find, found out about my HIV. Okay. Um, for the first time, I was shocked when I got the results from the doctor. Um, but on the other hand, I also was um, relieved because right now I know what was going on with me. And um, here in Germany, you got or you get immediately help by professional doctors, good medication, everything. So for me, it was not a death sentence, to be honest. I mean, okay, I had to change my life a little bit. I had to take medications. But right now, um, I live... uh, real natural normal life like mm-hmm. any other negative person as well and i don't even think about that i'm hiv positive because okay once a day i take my medicine that's it you know and 
every three months I'm going to, to see my doctor and everything is fine. So I'm not thinking about that I'm HIV positive. Mm -hmm. I do all the things what other yeah. people are also doing. And yeah, we are not thinking about that we are HIV yeah. positive. So, I like that, especially when you said you, you live your life and you do all the things that negative people do. There is no um, difference at all. And I like that. Um, for you, Fanny, now, obviously, like you said, you're really into activism. With your activism. And like Carlson has said, in 2009, um, I think you two are only a year apart for how long you've been taking ARVs, if I'm not wrong. I, yeah, yeah, but I still win. I took it um, from 208. He's taking it from 209. So. Ah, so it's still so close. And you can feel the difference yeah. of because Jamali had more advanced technology in health and the government was able to help people, the health system was able to help people. He had a very different experience from you. But now in Kenya, we have reached as well. However, there's always a conversation of ARVs and how expensive they are and how in certain countries, um, medication is easier, simpler to take, maybe even take less times than other people in other countries. So what, what work have you done in that field and what advancements have you seen that we can possibly do? Is there any more work that can be done in Kenya to make ARVs more available? um you know what to be so honest yeah we've come a long way but we still have a very long way to go okay. based on the funds that are set aside for hiv and healthcare systems you know uh based on the organizations that are really involved in this you know i'll give you a very good example when i came out in terms of uh, in a positive side when i came out i was taking two medicine uh medic uh, tablets um the morning and in the evening mm -hmm. and tablets were combined into three so basically i was taking six one um three in one three okay. in one you know one time but technically it was one times two but then practically it's like six you know oh. yeah so yeah we, we've come a long way from that to now from last year from early last year i'm now taking a pill daily you know one times one which is very good, you know. I, I wouldn't consider septin. Normally, people take septin as well, but then I don't consider septin as an ARV because it's not. It's just septin to prevent infections, and that's it. But now, in as much as we've advanced in terms of the pill burden, you know, that's perfect uh, to our healthcare system. But we still have a long way to go because it's 2020 and there are stockouts of uh, syrup for the babies you know uh things like nevirapin i mean you even get embarrassed of like i mean it's 2020 we should not even be talking about stockouts you know first of all hiv is a national disaster that in itself should let us know that okay by default there's a there's a fund you know put us for this reason now it's so sad that people have to buy syrup for for their babies thank god that my institution is sponsored by a whole different organization they are under bill and gates foundation um a bill and and foundation. Gates. yeah you don't have to buy the syrup but then there are so many people that have to buy the syrup and even the tablets you know because yeah. we, have, we experience workouts and it's 2020 and you're wondering you okay um you know there are funds set aside the organizations coming on board to help and everything you're wondering okay um it's so weird that things are not going as planned. So that's disappointing. But then the good thing is that the only time that you remember you are positive is when you are taking the ARVs. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Um, and I hope that our viewers have learned something new because uh, I'd, I'd never even thought about that the fact that they could actually be stockouts and somebody is like, oh, they can't even gain access to it. That's wild. Yeah. Um, oh, the reality that yeah. we're living in and it's unfortunately true. Um, I have noticed that our time is up. <laughs> I'm so sad. But before we finish up and you guys go, I would like for you to, to give a last word. Carlson, we can start with you. Um, do you have advice for couples that can be struggling um, with distance? Maybe they're both locked in different countries or they're locked in different cities like you and Fanny. Do you have any advice for them? Of course. Um... I mean, there's so many technology like WhatsApp, 
Skype, whatever, to get in touch to each other and yeah, keep on communicating every day, every hour, whenever you want to and share your love to each other. And I think uh, if this coronavirus pandemic is over, then I think we can go back to normal life and see each other and follow up whatever we want to plan and keep on going guys okay i love that i like that keep on going guys benny do you have something that you would like to tell our viewers um regarding the same yes regarding all couples but of course you can speak to any hiv positive person who's watching and maybe is struggling because coronavirus has brought new challenges for everybody oh yeah yeah definitely you know what? Um, it's so. I would like people to appreciate that they were once there when we lived through history. That's something that you know you you live to tell your 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 kids. Like, yeah, I was once there. Yeah, we were locked down. This is like uh, what? They was it a recession in the was it nineties or eighties? You know, it's such a big deal. So people should take right in the fact that they're living through history at the moment that's something so positive of course a negative thing is that it's caused so many challenges you know we have economic backlash we are facing so many challenges we have domestic violence in houses you know things that people don't want to talk about what i would like people to just think is that for every situation me i live with a mantra of faith, of faith. I always believe that things happen for a reason, you know? Maybe this happened for us to know more about humanity, discover how much we can help our brothers and sisters. It's hard for everyone, you know? Uh, so now, but, and on HIV positive or HIV couple, whether discordant or concordant like us, I would just let you, I would just like to tell people that you guys should support each other you know my first marriage uh this guy was hiv negative and honestly i'm not like painting him as a bad person or anything but he didn't even know what medicine i was taking you know there was no support you know so i feel like psychosocial support during any um hiv situation is very very important and on long distance relationship i would not like it's so hard. It's so hard. I can't wait to just be reunited with Kasten, you know, because you are planning to go on the other side. I can't just wait to go on the other side because this is very abnormal for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's so abnormal. And I can't just wait to go on the other side. Yeah, so that we just have a normal family raising kids together, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I love about what both of you have said is that the biggest thing that we look for um, as humans is connection. So you guys are like, yeah, yeah HIV, HIV positive. You're like, eh. but long distance relationship, now that's hard. <laughs> and that's something that everyone yeah. can relate to because that is challenging. You love somebody and they're so far away. That's not something that's easy um, to deal with every day. But you guys have been amazing. Yeah. I've had such a good conversation with you too. I've also learned so much. So thank you. Uh, before you go, could you please share your your social media handles and tell people where they can find you and ask you more questions so they can learn more. So you can find me um Facebook is Fanny Awiti Spielfield. Um Instagram is at Fanny Awiti Spielfield and I do um columns, uh weekly columns with the Nairobian page 33. That's our spot every Friday. And then, yeah, we connect with so many people on uh, socially, literally through, I, I, I am trying to form a brand called Affairs Vivinum, which is like an immune booster kind of thing. Yeah. So most of the people we also connect there socially. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, Carsten? <laughs> to be honest, I'm not so much in social media. Okay. I have this Instagram, Carsten Spielfeld. <laughs> but most of the time, <laughs> my wife is very active in the social media and I try my best to support her with all efforts I can do, especially with her new advanced or her new uh, brand and branches she wants to start up now. 
And I'm very proud of her that she started all those brands mm. as a new kind of business. Yeah. What she's doing, right? yeah. I'm very proud of her. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Every time I do these couple editions conversations, I always feel like a third wheel. Like I'm that third person who can join you on a date. <laughs> like a romantic evening. And I come and like, hey guys, so how are you? <laughs> but I've had such a good time talking to the two of you. I wish you all the best. Please keep staying safe and enjoy the rest Thank of you. the day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> That was the spiel feels. Wow, how amazing and inspiring. <gasps> As the two of them. Yes, yeah, so that is the end of conversations. Um, I always like to reiterate something that my guest said that really hit home with me. And everything that they said hit home with me. I don't know, but the biggest thing is obviously you can actually live a healthy, incredible HIV positive life. If you take care of yourself, obviously, and you take your ARV and you try and boost your immunity system, which is obviously by staying healthy and, and talking to your doctor, okay? Do what your doctor says, basically, because I'm not a professional. But this is conversations. Um, I will leave it at that for Surya's cut. I think everything that they said in the interview was great. Now we are going to go to the artist segment and enjoy really fun TikTok videos. So continue to enjoy the show. I'm Susan Jorg and I took you to the conversation segment. You can talk to me on social media directly as well if you like on my Instagram at Sura underscore comments and on Twitter at underscore. Follow our KTN home pages as well at KTN home underscore on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can find us as KTN home on YouTube and on Facebook.